Now everything you access is outside, and while many areas are sheltered only from above, some are not. There are clean bathrooms and a small concession stand. Upon entering, you will be shown, from a series of seats completely dependent upon your appointment time, where to sit. Once again, a worker will examine your papers and ensure they are in the correct order. In short time, you will be given a numbered card and called into a small line located close to your seat. Once your card number is called, you will then step forward to your first window. The windows throughout are completely the same. The glass is virtually all-inclusive and only allow a few sheets of paper to be passed through an underneath slot. You can only communicate via one phone hanging next to each window. Everything is kept very rudimentary. Here, a consulate official reviews your records and inputs information into a computer. When done, they will give you another card with a number. The officials ask a few questions of the fiancé to simply clarify what paperwork they review. These individuals speak fluent Spanish as well as English. Expect the conversation to be completely in Spanish unless you request otherwise. You are then directed to the opposite side of the grounds where there is a long series of windows and seats. There will be a very long line to your far right. These are people applying for B1, B2 visas, student visas, and the like. You will not wait in this line. Simply take a seat on their opposite side and wait for your number to be called. Once you advance to a window, your interview begins and hopefully ends here. Our interview lasted all of two minutes. The officer only asked these questions. How many times had I visited my fiancé in Colombia and for what duration? The answer was three times for a total of 28 days. How did we meet? The answer was through YouTube. What was my profession? The answer was an expanded dental hygienist. The complete conversation was in Spanish. During that time, the officer took my fiancé's fingerprints through a little box on the left-hand side of the window. And though the officer knew I was there, she never required my participation. There has been much internet discussion on how helpful it is for the petitioner to be present for the K-1 Bogota interview. I can tell you that the two ladies immediately before us came alone and both passed with fairly quick interviews of about five minutes total each. I saw at least one other lady pass her interview and she was unaccompanied. She approached a different window. I do not have any sense of how long her interview was. I did see where one unaccompanied lady failed, but again, I have no sense of how long her interview lasted. Just generally watching all the lines, I can certainly say that most passed their interview. And you can tell when somebody passes because they will leave the window less their passport. I was surprised by the small amount of time the consulate officers spent reviewing the packets prior to the interview. When they did so, they would walk away out of view of their window. The interviewers I watched spent two minutes or less doing this. Taking this into account, and also considering the limited logistics created by the window, I would submit that your initial material submitted to USCIS should be especially comprehensive, yet concise in showing the solid depth of your relationship. After experiencing all of this, without a doubt the petitioner need not be present for a positive outcome. However, if there are questions that arise about the petitioner's financials, or anything else that would likewise require clarification, the fiancé will not fail the interview but a second interview with the attendance of the petitioner will be necessary. All things being equal, I think the presence of the petitioner, provided no clarifications are needed, advances only a slightly more favorable outcome. About the demeanor of the embassy personnel, 
Again, those you encounter outside in the courtyard will be nothing less than helpful and very polite. They are limited to their native language. I actively observed a handful of officers at the window, and while a few seemed quite jovial and engaging, a minority seemed curt and would probably not be the type you would ever wish to share a short lunch and date with. About what to wear to the interview, I have read over and over not to wear jeans. Wrong. Three of those that quickly passed wore jean outfits. My fiancé was dressed completely in jeans. Certainly, I would recommend a tidy and coordinated outfit, but I think anything beyond that is very much like having the petitioner present. In a case where benefit of the doubt is required, it may put you over the top. But better than anything, however, is simply being prepared with the proper paperwork and giving short, sensible answers to all questions. At the end of the interview, you will be told of the outcome. If it is favorable, they will keep your fiancé's passport for a turnaround of about two weeks to include weekends. Their website touts a turnaround of about three to five days, but we know of one other fiancé who just passed her interview, and it was a week and a half, and she still has not received her visa. Our officer volunteered to send the visa back to us via courier at no cost. Earlier, we had not signed up for that service. In exactly two weeks, my fiancé's visa was ready, but needed to be picked up at the consulate. And that's at the ASC. Uh, whatever method of your delivery, you will receive an email outcome from the site, and I'll give that link just below here but it's ais.usvisainfo.com, and then there's a sign-in portion. I hope all of these details have been helpful. The most important ideas I can communicate to you, considering my reading and limited practical experience, are found on the next segment of this series.